last day, we started looking at moving in a circle. We said there were several key ideas. First of all, if you're moving in a circle, what direction is the acceleration? What direction is the net force? Inwards. Which way is your velocity tangent to the radius? At right angles to the radius. And then we said, OK, we've got some new equations. When you're moving in a circle, circular speed is 2 pi r over the period. You don't need to write that down. It's on your purple sheet, which by now you have out. And then circular acceleration is either v squared over r or 4 pi squared r over the period. Depends on what they give you or what they ask for. If a question says that I'm moving in a circle and they give me or ask for the speed, I'll use this one. If they give me or ask for the period, I'll use this one. We're going to start to do some lovely applications. We're going to look at Ferris wheels, which are great examples of vertical circles. In fact, today's lesson is circles that are vertical. A person rides on a Ferris wheel. Got to pause the video for a second because I always tell this story now. A person is riding on a Ferris wheel. How many of you have been on a Ferris wheel before? Is a Ferris wheel a scary ride or a tamer ride? Okay. So if we're calculating g's and accelerations and things, we're not expecting big accelerations. It's scary only if you're heights phobic, or if you swing it, it's kind of, if you, okay, but even that is, I've been on a swing set, whatever. Okay. A person rides on a Ferris wheel, that, and let's pretend they're sitting on a Newton scale that measures normal force. At the bottom of the Ferris wheel, what does the scale read? Fn equals mg. Fn is greater than mg. Fn is less than mg. Once again, we're going to vote. So at the bottom of a Ferris wheel, if you're sitting on the scale, Will the scale read your normal normal? Will the scale feel that you're heavier or that you're lighter? Who says, Mr. Duick, it's going to read normal normal because scales measure normal force, normal normal? One? Okay, who says A? Got one? At the bottom. Who says B? One, two, three, four, five, six? Who says C? One, two, three, four, five, six? Some of you didn't vote. Are they talking about the normal force in this question? Yes? You know what this is a good job for? It's a free body diagram. So you ready? Here's your first circular motion free body diagram. What path are we tracing out? A circle. I'm going to put a little dot right here. What are the forces acting on this person? Get the obvious one. Which way? Okay. What else? Normal force. Which way? Pause. What path is this person tracing out? A circle. Which way is the net bigger force always pointing when you're moving in a circle? Toward the who's winning toward the center who's bigger toward the center so here would be our equation who's winning who's the loser equals not m a m AC, because we're moving in a circle. Also, notice, Sky, this is the circular force. It doesn't show up on my free body diagram in the same way in winner minus loser, MA never showed up on the free body diagram. What showed up was all the stuff on the left-hand side. How would I get the normal force by itself, Sky? So if you're at rest, uh, instead of going MA plus MG, I'm going to go MG plus MAC, if that's okay. It's the same. If you're at rest, normally, that's what you feel. All of you are feeling that right now. Are we adding to the normal force? Then normal force is going to be bigger. At the bottom. 
On a Ferris wheel, people feel light at the top and heavy at the bottom. Why does this happen? Well, we've already proved heavy at the bottom. How would we prove light at the top? You know what this would be a good job for? What are the forces acting on you at the top? Get the obvious one. What else? Normal force, which way? Pointing up. What path am I tracing out? A circle. So is the normal force going to be bigger, smaller, or the same size as mg? Who's winning toward the? In fact, here, my equation would be winner minus loser equals mac. How would I get the normal force by itself here, Davis? Swappy dance, yes? Plus that there, minus that there. And I get the normal force here is not mg plus mac, it's mg minus mac. And again, remember Davis, your normal normal is just mg. We're subtracting from it, you'll feel lighter. at the top. And if you give me numbers, for example, if I know the radius of the roller coaster <coughs> and I time how long it takes to go around once, I can actually tell you what your normal force would be. It's easy. Pause for a second. In Latin, the word centripetal with a P means towards, petal, and center. So when an object is moving in a circle, it has an inwards or a centripetal acceleration. In fact, this letter C doesn't stand for circular, it stands for centripetal, but because circle and centripetal grace both begin with a C, you can pretend it stands for circular if it makes you happy. If you're moving in a circle, you're accelerating towards the center, and that means that the net force is towards the center. That means the winner is towards the center. If you're moving in a circle, who's winning? Towards the center. Who's losing? Pointing away from the center. Winner minus loser equals MAC. And which A? One of those circular motion acceleration equations. So I use the following notation. AC stands for the inwards or centripetal acceleration. FC stands for the inwards net force. And the C stands for centripetal. But again, you can pretend, Paige, that it stands for circular if it makes you happy. Okay? And pick up with where we are. I think you'll find it easier. So here's the key idea. In our handy winner minus loser approach, FC will always be the net force. It will never show up on the free body diagram in the same way, Kai, that MA never showed up on the free body diagram. What showed up on the free body diagram was all of the forces on the left side of the equation, the winners and the losers. Uh, in the previous example, the Ferris wheel is a rigid wheel, which means the top and bottom of the wheel are turning at the same velocity, same speed. And the circular motion is uniform. This is not always true for vertical circles. You can also have a pendulum look up. So here is a mass on the end of a string. And if I spin it, if you watch really close, I think you can see it slows down at the top and speeds up at the bottom. This is the only time that we're going to look at non-uniform circular motion where the speed changes. But the only place that we can analyze this situation is right here and right here. When the mass is at the top, when the mass is at the bottom. We could maybe handle it when it was right here, but it would be a lot of trig and components and bleh, don't care. Okay? So if we look at a pendulum, which moves faster at the bottom than at the top. Example three says, write force equations for the vertical pendulum. Okay, first of all, at the top of the loop, right here. So let's write force equations. This is a job for a free body diagram. What are the forces acting on that mass at the top of the loop? Get the obvious one. What else? Is it sitting on a surface? I'm going to say that's a bad guess. Is there a rope or a string? What do we call that force? Which way? Also towards the center. 
Who's winning? It's a trick question. They both are. My equation is going to be mg plus tension equals mac. Just for giggles, I'm going to get the tension by itself. So tension at the top would be mac minus mg. What about at the bottom? Well, let's write an equation. What are the forces acting on it at the bottom? Oh, by the way, sorry, we can do one, we can do one more thing. It says V1 right here. So I could actually bring in the fact that AC equals V squared over R. So at the top, it would be MV1 squared over R minus MG. Do the masses cancel? There's an M there. There's an M there. Ooh, is there an M in tension? No. No, the masses won't cancel because a heavier mass is much more likely to snap a rope than a lighter mass. Right? Okay. So there's A. B. What are the forces acting here? Get the obvious one. Mg down. What else? Which way? Okay. Who's winning? Toward the center. So tension is going to be the winner. My equation is going to be winner minus loser equals MAC. If I get the tension by itself, it's going to be MAC plus MG or MG plus MAC. In fact, it's going to be MV2 squared over R plus MG. Where is a rope more likely to break? Where is tension going to be the biggest? At the top or at the bottom? Why? You're right. Convince me. Look at the equation for the top. Circular motion minus gravity. Doesn't that make the answer smaller? Circular motion plus gravity. Doesn't that make the answer bigger? Oh, and this speed is going to be bigger than that speed. Because you slow down at the top and you speed up at the bottom. Not for a rigid wheel like a Ferris wheel, but for swinging a rope, a mass on the end of a rope. So in vertical circles, there can be tangent forces that cause the object to speed up or slow down like in a pendulum, not in a Ferris wheel. But the net force, the inwards force is mv squared over r, or it's m4 pi squared r over t squared. I would use that one if instead of giving me the speed, they gave me the period, or they asked for the period. No horizontal forces, or if there are, they balance out. So the net horizontal force is zero. Let's do some with some numbers here. I like example four, I like example four, example four is a nice question. I also like example four because roller coaster loops. Okay. How many of you have been on a roller coaster with a loop? Okay. How many have been on a roller coaster with a circular loop? Everybody put your hands down. Okay. None of you have been on a roller coaster with a circular loop. And in a couple of lessons, I'll prove to you why that's not the case, because you're all alive. But you've been on with a loop. We're going to pretend, we're going to start out with purely circular loops, and we're going to use them because it makes the physics easier, M. But in a couple of lessons, I'll show you why nobody builds them that way. So a 70 kilogram passenger is moving at 10 meters per second at the top of an upside down roller coaster. Find the seat, find the force the seat exerts on this person. What force is this question really asking me to find? What is the force that the seat exerts on a person called? Normal force, okay? Okay. Well, this is a job for a free body diagram then. What are the forces acting on this person? Get the obvious one. Which way? Okay. What else? Which way? That the difference between a Ferris wheel and a roller coaster, the only difference is at the top. 
At the top in a Ferris wheel, normal force is up because your head is pointing up. In fact, you want the rule in an amusement park ride, which way is your head pointing? That's the direction of the normal force. If you want to add that to your purple sheet, you can, or if it just makes sense to you, we're, we're good. So yeah, the normal force is also going to be down. Who's winning? What's my equation? How would I get the normal force by itself? Now I need to figure out which version of A to use. Please note where your circular acceleration equations are on your formula sheet so that your eyes know where to glance. Should know where they are. So here's the question. Did they give me speed or period? Speed? So I'm going to, on my next line, go mv squared over r minus mg. If they, instead of giving me the speed, if they had timed how long it took to go around, I would use the period. Although I wouldn't use the period for a roller coaster loop because a roller coaster loop is kind of like the pendulum in that you're going slower at the top than you are at the bottom. So I'm almost certainly trying to figure out the speed there. Okay. 70. 10 squared all over r. Oh, in the picture, 8 meters minus 70 times 9.8. Hey, do the m's cancel here? No, not when you're finding a normal force. This is why little kids can probably handle roller coasters better than grown-ups. Or you might find as you get heavier, as you age, suddenly rides that you could handle when you were 14 or 12, I can't handle them when I'm 45. You never know. So far I'm still good, but I might lose my ability to deal with rides. Oh, and I taught you last year that all a good amusement park ride does is it mucks around with the normal force, right? Okay. I think I showed you the uh, kids' first roller coaster video. Minus, oh, minus zero times 9.8. 70 mv squared over r minus mg. That looks right to me. Do you get 189? Divide that by 9.8, how many kilograms do they feel like they have a mass of right now? They feel much, they feel like they're about to fall out because they're not used to feeling that light. There's still plenty of normal force. They're, they're still safe. In fact, technically, you could get away without a lap belt here, but you would scream and you would feel much lighter. Okay. 189 newtons. In example five, what would happen to the scale reading, the normal force, if the roller coaster moved A, slower, B, faster? Hmm. You know what? How about I do that and I'll answer part A on the left and part B on the right. Kai, did I just derive an equation for normal force at the top of a roller coaster? Can you read it to me? What does Fn equal? Give me the algebraic version. Now, no, with, with, even the one after that, where we plug, where we took AC and we substituted in for that, M. Okay. If we go slower, which one of these variables changes? Be obvious. V. Bigger or smaller if we go slower? Small. Okay, so as V decreases, if this number got smaller, what would happen to this answer? Yeah. First of all, as this answer gets smaller, what would happen to this answer? Yeah. 
The slower the roller coaster goes at the top, the lighter you'll feel. What if it goes faster? How should you feel? Prove it. Well, same argument. As V increases, normal force increases. Manchand, you had a is that why question. Nope. Uh, if it's a perfect circle, you experience bigger G's at the bottom because you're moving faster. If it's a perfect circle, we'll prove it later on, but you're experiencing G's that would most make most people really uncomfortable. Probably cause some whiplash or some shoulder or neck injury. Uh, the first roller coaster loops were circular and they actually had nurses and ambulances stationed at the bottom. This would have been in the 1900s. People went on it and thought that was great. Do you feel that? Bottom of the circle. Uh, hitting it, hit, hitting the loop, and leaving the loop. But we'd have to see if there was a significant speed. In theory, in a perfect world with no friction, any speed you lost due to potential energy, you would gain back in kinetic energy at the bottom. So in theory, your speed hitting the loop and leaving the loop, in theory, are the same. In theory. Um, what would happen... If this number was so small that you got a negative answer, what would happen if V was, oh, let's come back to that. Example six. If a pendulum of example three or the upside down coaster of example five was moving at the minimum safe speed what would that imply about the forces? If you're moving at the minimum safe speed, if you're going as slow as possible, so I've just told you that as you slow down, the normal force gets smaller. What's the minimum the normal force can be? Zero. Or if we're talking about tension, well, watch. I'm going to slow down to the minimum safe speed. Slowing down. Slowing down. Watch the rope when I slow down. Can you see it? If I go to minimum safe speed, what's tension exactly as a number? Just like normal force exactly as a number is zero, what's tension exactly as a number? The magic speed would be tension equals zero. If I go slower than that, there's slack and it falls. It doesn't make it through the whole circle. Okay? So we're going to say minimum safe speed for a roller coaster loop. Normal force is zero. Minimum safe speed for a rope on the end of a string, tension is zero. So let's find an expression for that at the top of the loop. Well, we said that at the top, tension plus mg equals mv squared over r. If tension is zero, I get oh. Now, does the mass cancel? Turns out, yeah. The minimum space safe speed for grown-ups and for little kids is going to be the same. Or the minimum safe speed for different masses on the end of a rope is going to be the same. Let's get the V by itself. How would I get the V by itself? How would I move the R over? And then that gives me a V squared. I get V equals the square root of GER. And I always say that because this expression will show up fairly often. In fact, it's kind of going to be a familiar friend. Harsh, if you're doing a complicated question and partway through you end up with a square root of GER, maybe some other numbers inside the square root as well, but there's a square root of GER, probably you set it up right. What about for a roller coaster? Well, for a roller coaster, the normal force would be zero. And I would end up with mg equals mv squared over, oh, m cats. In fact, you know what? For a roller coaster, the minimum safe speed is also the square root of GER, 9.8 times whatever the radius is, square root. If you go slower than that in a roller coaster, you either won't make it to the top of the loop or you'll fall off the track if you're not stuck to the track. 
If you go slower than that, spinning a mass on the end of a rope, you saw the rope went slack and the object started to fall before it completed the circle. How many of you have ever taken a bucket of water or a bucket of sand and spun it vertically and marveled when you were a child or maybe even as a teenager that nothing fell out? This is one for you to try this summer on a hot summer day with a bucket of water. It's a lot of fun. And then you try and push the limit. How slow can I spin until it falls out? Because on a hot summer day, if the worst that happens is you get wet, you wanted to get wet anyways. And this is one often you'll see little kids doing if you ever go to a beach somewhere. It's something they'll figure out and they'll fill their pail with water or with sand and they'll go, oh, wow, it's not falling out. So if we spin a bucket of water fast enough, it's possible to momentarily invert the bucket and yet not have any water fill out. Why? Okay. Let's see if we can walk our way through this. This is a job for a... One of the forces acting on the water. Get the obvious one. What else? There is a normal force from the surface of the bucket. It's like sitting in the chair. Who's winning? They both are. So what's my equation? My equation is going to be normal force plus mg equals mac. And I'm going to bring in the version of a that's equal to v squared over r, because I'm going to be talking about speed. I get this. Normal force plus mg equals m, what did I write? It equals mv squared over r. I'm going to get the normal force by itself. Matt L, how would I get the normal force by itself? Good. So I'm going to get this. The normal force is equal to mv squared over r minus mg. Okay. How do you stay dry? As long as mv squared over r is bigger than mg, as long as you get a positive answer, as long as there is a normal force, you're above the minimum safe speed and you'll stay dry. Let's get the V by itself. As long as V is bigger than the square root of GER, you'll stay dry because there's a normal force still. As soon as V is smaller than that number, it's not gonna, the, the mass is not going to make it all the way through the loop in the same way my pendulum on the end of the rope didn't make it all the way through the loop. So the water won't make it all the way through the loop. It's going to fall or the sand is going to fall. How many of you have done that with a bucket of water or sand? Come on. Those of you that haven't, got to try it. It's a fun one. Cool physics. Example eight. So again, when we're talking about vertical circles, what are the key concepts? Paige, which way are you accelerating? Toward the? Which way is the winner? Toward the? And MAC does not show up on the free body diagram. A student is in a car that's traveling at 28 meters per second on a hill of radius 120 meters. When the car is at the top of the hill, what upward force does the seat exert on the student? What force is this really asking me to find? This is a job for a free body diagram. What are the forces acting on the student? Get the obvious one. What else? Am I going to draw a normal force bigger, smaller, or the same size as mg, and how do I know? What path am I tracing out? A circle. Where is the bigger, larger force going to be pointing? Toward the? I'll exaggerate it. Uh, if this was in the bottom of a circle, like an inverted circle, then normal force would be bigger. Who's winning? Who's losing? 
What's that going to equal? MAC. Swappy dance. I'll get MG minus MAC equals the normal force. Now I need to figure out which version of A to use. And to figure out which version of A to use, they're either going to give you or ask for speed, or they're going to give you or ask for period. Which one did they give me here? And I know I haven't done one yet where we're using the T one. We will, but I think speed, yes? So this is going to be mg minus mv squared over all. And do you mind? I'm going to put fn on the left-hand side. So it's going to be 72 times 9.8 minus 72 times 28 squared all over 120. Harsh, what'd you get? That's my way of saying get your calculator out and practice typing these in. You get 235.2. And just for giggles, I'm going to quickly divide by 9.8. So this person feels as though their mass is 24 kilograms instead of 72 kilograms. They feel lighter. That's that stomach feeling that you sometimes get going over a quick bump or a quick hill. I don't know if there's one in the Pitt Meadows area. There's a hill in Abbotsford that everyone knows about. It's on North Parallel Road. It's right off of Sumas Way. Or if you hit it at the speed limit, you'll get that stomachy feeling. How fast would the car need to travel for the student to feel weightless? If you feel weightless, is mg zero? No. What force is zero if you feel weightless? Normal force. That's why astronauts float in the International Space Station. They're still in a gravitational field, but they're in free fall. They feel weightless. So to feel weightless, fn would need to be zero. OK. Let's start with this equation that I wrote in black. Mg minus Fn equals Mac. How big is the normal force now? And I end up with Mg equals Mv squared over R. Oh, will little kids and grown-ups feel weightless at this speed? Get the V by, oh, is it our old friend, the square root of Gur? Cool. So it's going to be the square root of 9.8 times 120. Thirty-four point three times by three point six. One hundred twenty-three kilometers per hour. Fast, but not crazy fast. But that would be not a safe speed to be driving at. Hey, Mr. Duick, what if you went faster than thirty-four point three meters per second? What would happen? What? Yes. Yes. Or you can say get air. Yeah. Unlike the sand pail of a pail of sand or pail of water, this is an experiment what I'm that I'm telling none of you to do. In fact, I'm telling all of you not to try this. This would be dangerous without training. Okay. Example 9. 
Raj has a mass of 72 kilograms. He's riding a Ferris wheel of 12 meters, and he's moving with a constant speed. Yeah, Ferris wheels will move at a constant speed. Unlike a roller coaster, where you're slower at the top and faster at the bottom, Ferris wheel, it's a rigid wheel. At the top of the Ferris wheel, the bench that he is sitting at applies a normal force of 450 newtons. How fast is the Ferris wheel moving? Oh. Huh. Kyle, what's this question want me to find? I'll bet you this is a job for a free body diagram because there is a version of circular force that contains a V in it. So that's the next little domino chain of thinking I have to go with. Hey, what are the forces acting on this rider at the top? Get the obvious one. Which way? What else? Which way? Because the head's pointing up. Bigger, smaller, or the same size as MG? Smaller. Oh, MG, FM. Kyle, who's winning? What's my equation? And if you wanted to, you could say, since they're asking for speed, V squared over R on this line. I'd be okay with that. If instead of saying, how fast is this Ferris wheel moving, if they had said, how long will it take this Ferris wheel to go around once, then I would plug in the 4 pi squared r over t squared, and we get the t by itself. Meh. A little uglier because there's a pi in it, but whatever. Uh, mg. You know, I could get the v by itself now. It would be times by r divided by m squared. This is about my limit. I think what I'm going to do, Kyle, is I'm going to turn this into a single number. Then I'll get the V by itself. So I'm going to crunch mg 72 times 9.8 minus 450. That equals mv squared over r. 72 times 9.8 minus 450. And I get 255.6. That equals mv squared over r. Kyle, how would I get the v by itself? So v is going to be the square root of 255.6 times r divided by m going to be the square root of 255.6 times, what was the radius? 12 divided by 72. And I get 6.526, I'll write 6.53 meters per second. Alex, what does B want me to find? At the bottom. You know what this is a good job for. What are the forces acting at the bottom? Get the obvious one. What else? Bigger, smaller, or the same size as MG? Ah. What's my equation? And I'm going to be brave and go v squared over r. And I can use the same v from part a. In fact, this would be a good test question, but I wouldn't ask you part a. I would go straight to part b, and I would expect you to clue in. I gave you enough information with the normal force at the top that you can figure out the speed and drop it down to the bottom as well, I think. Now, uh, oh, how would I get the fn by itself? So it's going to be mg plus mv squared over r. So the normal force is going to be 
72 times 9.8 plus 72 times, I'm going to write 6.53 squared, but I'll use my answer button over 12. Nine hundred and sixty one point two. How many G's are they following feeling at the bottom? How would I take a force and convert it into G's? How do I convert an acceleration into G's? Do you remember? Divide by 9.8. How do I convert a force into g's? Instead of dividing by g, I divide by mg. If I divide this by 72 times 9.8, pulling about 1.4 g's. And so coming full circle, is a Ferris wheel considered a tame ride or a thrill ride? At the bottom, you're pulling just a little over a g. You pull more than that on a swing set, it's a tame ride. Okay? You change an acceleration to g's, divide by 9.8. To change a force to g's, divide by m times 9.8. mg. How many of you have ever gone on a swing set before? Okay, Manchin hasn't? Okay, ready? I'm going to ask, I'm willing to bet. How many of you have tried to swing as high as you can to see if you could loop and go all the way around? Here's the question. Can a child on a swing ever swing fast enough to completely loop over the swing bar? Kai nods. You think so? And let's say unaided, so unassisted. Nobody giving you a massive... Did they still call it an underduck? Is it? Okay. It was called that when I was a kid. Wow, that's one that hasn't changed. No one's giving you a massive push. Can you? However, if you have a rigid swing, uh, often called a Russian swing, Is he gaining potential energy? Where's the energy coming from? So he's carefully timing shifts of his weight and he's applying a force with his feet in the same way that when you swing, you all learn when you're four or five years old, someone teaches you the, the lean back, the point your feet forward, the pull in the chains, the tuck your knees, all those. You can add energy to the system. He's doing something similar here. So he's getting tired because he's adding a lot of energy to the system. You gotta be in good shape to do this. Hey.
I think he's strapped in, but I'm not. I think in his boots are strapped down, but I'm not sure because he's definitely not wearing a weight a waist belt or anything. I think his boots are strapped in. So, can you swing fast enough to go over the bar? Not with slack chains, but with rigid chains. Yes, you can. Okay. I've seen at some skate parks, there's a complete full pipe, and I've seen skateboarders manage to do the full pipe. Could a human being running run a loop-the-loop? It's -loop? a good question. Don't try this one yourselves. <laughs> Drinking Pepsi Max will not help you run the loop the loop. Just making sure you understand that they sponsored this, though. The physics here is good. My name is Dean Waters, and I'm a stuntman who does tumbling and gymnastics in Parkour. I'm attempting to run the loop. So I've seen people doing a skateboard before, I've seen people doing a BMX before, but no one's ever tried it on their feet, so it's been nice to be the first guy to actually run it. It looks a lot bigger than what I thought it was going to be. Yeah, I must have been not the easiest thing I've ever done. To be one of the first people to do things is is always one of my ambitions, you know, I want to try and keep pushing the boundaries even further and further and see how far people can go. Basically boils down to a centripetal force. Centripetal force, what we've been talking about today. You need to keep on accelerating mv squared over that looks familiar so you need to reach a certain speed mm -hmm. and i've worked that out it's quite good news actually the speed at the top is 8.65 miles per hour that's it okay three two one go 17. so he can run faster than the minimum speed required by a fair bit almost twice as fast over twice as fast <laughs> Can someone show that one back? Well, this one's it. I know I've said that three times now, but this one is it. Well, I'm, I'm close, I reckon. But... You can see it's really tough because when he reaches a certain angle, your body just wants to crouch and flip out of it. He has to, as he's running, throw his weight back at the ground and let his feet get above him. So it's, it's at least part of this is also just overcoming a whole bunch of built-in safety mechanisms that our bodies have so we don't hurt ourselves when we fall. Don't really go any further until yeah. you take the match out. Yeah, get rid of him. go for it. or trips a bit at the end there, but we'll give them that, okay? And again, Pepsi Max will not help you run a loop, okay? What's your homework? 
the take-home quiz that I gave you? Man, number one. Two is good. I already circled number one if you were paying attention, yes. But you can skip number three. You'll figure it out. Four is good. Five is good. So five, I'm telling you, it will break when tension is bigger than 30 newtons. So let tension equal 30 newtons solve for V. And if you go any faster than that, the string will snap. Six is good. Seven is good. Skip eight. Twelve is good, but you can skip A. Thirteen is good. Fourteen is good. 